welcome back in this lecture we will introduce the central type of capacitor uh, which we'll be discussing over a series of lectures so this is the electrochemical double layer capacitor so in the earlier lectures we had looked at conventional electrostatic capacitors and electrolytic capacitors. But our central topic is the discussion on electrochemical double layer capacitors, uh, often referred to as EDLC. We had seen that the capacitance goes as the area divided by distance okay, of charge separation. So if you want to increase the capacitance, you need to increase the interfacial area uh, where charge separation occurs. And in our earlier lecture on porous electrodes, we had seen in an electrochemical device, one of the important ways of increasing surface area is by creating a lot of porosity in the electrode. So these electrodes, they're called porous electrode. So essentially these electrodes have a lot of surface area, which goes towards increasing capacitance. And the second aspect is that by decreasing D, you can also increase the capacitance. So in these electrochemical double layer capacitors, you have an electrode electrolyte interface and this distance which goes here is very very small so let's look at see this is reasonably macroscopic distance this is still micron size but this is much less than these two length scales the length scale that goes in here in an electrochemical double layer capacitor is of molecular dimension. So what you have here is a metallic electrode and this is the electrolytic side and there is charge separation across this electrode electrolyte interface. We will elaborate these issues as we progress in this series of lectures. So a simple schematic of an electrochemical double layer capacity, electrochemical double layer is shown here. There's a lot of information. We'll go through this slowly. So you have uh, a plate, let's say a metallic plate that is charged negatively. This plate is uh, charged positively. These are two different electrode electrolyte interface. So what you have here is that you have a cation that is solvated. And these are anions that are also solvated. So if you have a cation that is solvated, the solvent molecule, in this case water, um, is aligned in a particular way. And in this case, supposing you have an anion molecule, the dipole, water dipoles are also aligned in a different manner. So what we have here are solvated cations that are bound to the or bound or adsorbed to the electrode surface that is negatively charged. So here you have a partially desolvated anion molecule that is adsorbed to a positively charged electrode. And there is this distance X H. H refers to Helmholtz, the scientist Helmholtz, who developed early theories for quantifying these kinds of electrochemical double layer capacitors. It is called the Helmholtz uh, model. We will look at that in subsequent slide in this lecture. So this refers, the, that is the distance between this interface, that is the metal electrochemical interface and the center of these cations is referred here by XH 
and there is a smaller distance xh because this anion is partially desolvate. It's called a compact layer and there is this diffuse layer. So the diffu in the diffuse layer, these solvated ions are present. These are mobile as opposed to these ions which are moving around. These are fairly static uh, and adsorbed uh, onto the surface. So uh, onto the electrode surface. So here what we see is the metal electrode with this negatively charged. Onto this is adsorbed some ions um, and solvent molecules. So this refers to the water dipole because this is negatively charged. The water dipole is oriented in a particular manner. There are more water dipoles that are aligned so as to decrease the electrostatic energy. That is, if it is oriented in this uh, direction, the energy comes down. And then you have unsolvated ions. So this layer, which was referred to as the Helmholtz layer, is differentiated into inner Helmholtz layer, IHP, and outer Helmholtz layer, um, OHP. We have looked at this structure of the electrochemical uh, double layer in an earlier uh, lecture. So please refer to that lecture too. All these layers together, the Helmholtz layer and this diffuse layer um, is referred to as the electrochemical double layer. So what is important to understand is that each of this electrode-electrolyte interface has the capacity to store energy and acts like a capacitor. So in this has to be contrasted uh, against the conventional electrostatic capacitor. There, the charge separation occurs via two electrodes, but as opposed to that, here, the single electrode electrolyte interface has a capacity to store charges at each interface. Um, one such interface will act like a capacitor. Moving on further, the simplest model for capacitance of an electrochemical double layer capacitance is given by the Helmholtz model. So here, E refers to voltage. So this kind of a formula we had seen in an earlier lecture when we introduced differential capacitance. So we had mentioned differential capacitance is equal to dq by dv. So the just the symbol is different, but it is the same formula. So going by this model, the Helmholtz model, capacitance uh, divided by area, the interfacial area between uh, this electrode electrolyte that goes here, is given by the permittivity of in this region divided by XH. So it is important to understand, even when you have, let's say, a water as the solvent here, this permittivity is different from the permittivity of bulk water. The In uh, bulk water, uh, the water dipoles can realign itself very easily. And that is why we say the dielectric constant of water is high because dielectric constant or dielectric permittivity of water is a measure of water to screen electric field, right? And because water is a strong dipolar liquid, it can reorient itself, rotate itself uh, very easily to screen charges. But as opposed to such kind of bulk water, the water that is adjacent to a metal electrode 
the orientational degrees of freedom is rather frozen. So these water molecules that are adsorbed onto this electrode surface, they cannot reorient itself very easily and its dielectric permittivity is much less compared to the dielectric constant of bulk water. So if typically the bulk water has a dielectric constant of 80, as opposed to that, the dielectric constant of water in this region it will take it will take a value of about six. So in the simplest of model, the capacitance can be represented via this formula, the dielectric constant of water or in general, this layer uh, divided by XH. XH is given here. So we will just go through the process of charging a double layer capacitor. Supposing uh, electrochemical double layer capacitor. Supposing we sta start with the configuration wherein these two electro electrodes do not have any charge. Charges cannot be created or destroyed. So they can only be separated. So from two neutral metal plates um, which are which do not hold any charge, you remove some electrons from one metal plate and this removed electron flows through an electronic conductor which is a wire onto this metal plate. You remove electrons from this metal plate and the electronic current flows in this direction which is opposite of the conventional current and you deposit this metal plate making it negative and making it making this metal plate positive. When that occurs, cations in the electrolyte, it can be solvated cations, they move towards this electrode and anions, solvated anions, will move towards this electrode. So that the electrostatic energy is brought down, the system becomes more stable. And another important issue to notice is that there's a continuity of current. So when you have conventional current in the wire, uh, there is a continuity of this current with the electrolytic current in the electrolyte. We had looked at these issues in the first few lectures um, in the introduction to electrochemical uh, engineering lecture series. So please refer to uh, those lectures to understand better what we mean by continuity of current, continuity of electronic current with the current that is present in the electrolyte. So this is the way we charge an electrochemical double layer capacitor. In the next lecture, we would look at a more complex uh, model for understanding the electrochemical double layer capacitor. In this lecture, we had looked at the Helmholtz model. The topic of the next lecture will be the GUI Chapman model for quantifying electrochemical double layer capacitance. Thank you.